The subject of this seminar is the veil of thoughts. And uh, following out the theme that somebody once suggested by saying that thought is a means of concealing truth, despite the fact that it's an extraordinarily useful faculty. But in quite recent weeks, we've had an astounding example of the way mankind can be bamboozled by thoughts. Uh, there was a crisis about gold. And uh, the confusion of money in any form whatsoever with wealth is one of the major problems from which civilization is suffering. Because way back in our development, when we first began to use symbols to represent the events of the physical world, we found this such an ingenious device that we became completely fascinated with it. And in ever so many different dimensions of life, we are living in a state of total confusion between symbol and reality. And the real reason why in our world today where uh, there is no technical reason whatsoever why there should be any poverty at all. The reason it still exists is people keep asking the question, where's the money going to come from? Not realizing that money doesn't come from anywhere and never did. Uh, except if you thought it was gold. And then, of course, uh, if to increase the supply of gold and use that to finance all the world's commerce, prosperity would depend not upon finding new processes for growing food in vast quantities or getting uh, nutrition out of the ocean or uh, getting water from atomic energy. No, it depends on discovering a new gold mine. And uh, you can see what a nonsensical state of affairs that is because when gold is used for money, it becomes in fact, useless. Gold is very useful metal for filling teeth, making jewelry, and maybe covering the dome of the Capitol in Washington. But the moment it is locked up in vaults in the form of ingots, it becomes completely useless. It becomes a false security, something that people cling to, like an idol, like a belief in some kind of big daddy oh god with whiskers who lives above the clouds. And all, all that kind of thing uh, diverts our attention from reality. And we go through all sorts of weird rituals and uh, get in uh, the symbol. In other words, gets in the way of uh, practical life. So, uh, it was, you remember the Great Depression. I expect a number of you here looking around are old enough to remember the Great Depression when uh, one day everybody was doing business and things were going along pretty well and the next day there were bread lines. Uh, it was like someone came to work and they said to him, sorry chum, but you can't build today. No, no building can go on. We don't have enough inches. He said, what do you mean we don't have enough inches? We got wood, haven't we? We got metal, we even got tape measures. He say, yeah, but you don't understand the business world. Uh, we just haven't got enough inches, just plain inches. Uh, we've used too much of them. And that's exactly what happened when we had the Depression. Because money is something of the same order of reality as inches, grams, meters, pounds, or lines of latitude and longitude. It is an abstraction. It is a method of bookkeeping to obviate the cumbersome procedures of barter. But our culture, our civilization, is entirely hung up on the notion that money has an independent reality of its own. And this is a very striking, concrete example of what I'm going to talk about.